In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at the physical design of the MV Core. We'll walk through its external features, including its size, cooling system, and connections, as well as how to properly rack the unit in your setup. Understanding the physical aspects of the core is important not only for aesthetics, but also for ensuring the optimal performance and long-term reliability. From the front panel to the rear ports, we'll explore everything you need to know about installing and maintaining the MV Core in your home cinema or media room. Let's begin by looking at the overall size and dimensions of the MV Core. The MV Core is two rack units high and weighs 18 pounds. It has a standard rack width of 17 and a quarter inches with a depth of 13 and a half inches. These compact dimensions give it the versatility fit comfortably in standard AV racks or cabinets, allowing for flexible installation options in various setups. Now, turn your attention to the front of the unit. You'll notice the elegant mesh panel with Envy branding and accent lines, giving the unit a sleek, modern look. There's also a power button with great tactile feedback and a soft glow LED power ring. To turn the MV on, simply press and release the power button. Likewise, do the same to turn it off. Please avoid pressing and holding this button as it performs a hard shutdown, which is not recommended. Like the MV Pro and Extreme, the Glacier cooling system keeps the unit very cool and nearly silent. You'll need to be within just a couple of feet to even hear it. The cooling system draws fresh air into the case using four 80 millimeter static pressure fans along the front and expels the air through the lid and the rear. To clean any dust that may accumulate over time, turn off the unit and use a soft brush along the mesh with a small vacuum. Let's take a look at the left side of the case and discuss the racking. Note that the right side is identical. To rack the unit, simply remove the three screws on each side near the front of the unit and secure the rack gears using the same screws. There's generally no need to leave a blank space above or below the unit in the rack, but avoid mounting it directly on top of any hot components like an amplifier or an AVR. Here's how it looks from the side with the ears attached. And here's how it looks from the front with the ears. Remember to remove the feet before racking by hand turning them counterclockwise. Store the feet with the product packaging so they don't get lost. The ears and rack screws are included with the unit. Hear a lesson on the unboxing for more information about what's included with the MV Core. If you're installing the MV in a cabinet or a shelf, make sure there's ample ventilation for warm air to escape and for fresh air to reach the unit. Ensure at least six inches of clearance between the rear of the unit and the back of the cabinet or wall. The MV also supports various cooling modes, such as silent, balanced, and rack mode. Depending on the ventilation and your proximity to the unit when seated, you may want to adjust this setting. See your lesson on power and cooling for more details. Now, let's take a look at the rear of the unit. To connect your MV to the system, it needs to go in line between your AVR and the display. To do this, connect your AVR to the HDMI port on the MV labeled input and connect your display to the MV HDMI port labeled output. Moving on to the other ports, on the left side, you'll find the power port, which is auto switching and accepts either 110 or 220 volts. The MV draws up to about 200 watts. Connecting it to a UPS is recommended to protect it from unexpected shutdowns in case of a loss of power. Next, you'll find the USB ports labeled RF and IR. Plug the RF dongle for the remote control into either of these ports. It also supports IR, so if that's desired, you can purchase a Flerk USB dongle from an online retailer and place it into the other USB port. This leaves two spare USB ports that can be used to power an active fiber HDMI cable or to connect to a keyboard, which can be useful for naming profiles or naming calibration LUTs or substituting a remote control in a pinch. You'll also find a LAN port, which connects the AMV to your network and the internet. This is necessary for IP control, downloading firmware updates, or allowing your dealer to provide remote support with your prior permission. 
please review our other Academy lessons for full details on how to set up your display and sources for the best picture quality with the MV Core and for guidance on configuring the MV settings. Now that we covered the physical design, cooling, and peripheral connections on the MV Core, it's time to move on to our next lesson.